Welcome to Wannabe Entrepreneur. Today I have my second guest, my second interview, and I am speaking with Matthias. Hey, Matthias. Hey. Thank you so much for, for joining. I also, I also met Matthias in Trivago. I guess most of the people that I will be interviewing are from Trivago. And he's a person that I think is, has a very and big entrepreneur spirit. He started so many projects that I, I cannot even count. And today we'll be speaking about his most recent project. It's called Kick My Ass. But I guess for a start, I would like to ask you, Matthias, to quickly introduce yourself. A couple of words. So who is Matthias so that the listeners kind of know? So you set the bar really high. Um, <laughs> I guess I have to lower it a bit. I'm just a normal guy interested in computers. And I like when people understand that computers are simple machines that can help us maybe set a goal for ourselves and finish it. Um, I work at Trivago and uh, I'm a backend engineer. I work in website performance. And at the same time, I'm also an open source maintainer for many different projects, which I've been doing for, I guess, the better part of 10 years now. And I'm mostly in the Rust community these days. Uh, I'm part of the Rust the Cologne meetup, and I also had a YouTube channel about Rust. And yeah, I do all sorts of talks and blogging and so on. Cool. Yeah, I guess we could just speak about so many projects, and this podcast could last for hours. But today, <laughs> let's speak about then your most recent project, which has an amazing name, Kick My Ass, right? Yeah, I'm not so sure about the name anymore. <laughs> so, can you pitch it? Sure, I can pitch it. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, one thing that you mentioned in the beginning was that the people that you'll be interviewing will be mainly coming from Trivago. And I think Trivago is a nice pool of talent. We have a lot of people from different areas of expertise, but they all share this desire to build and they are all kind of entrepreneurs i would say they have this passion true but the main thing is that no one holds us accountable for our responsibilities and for our side projects so when the day is really busy and it's winding down then maybe you don't have the passion anymore to work on your side project and then you know things get delayed eventually this dream kind of fades away and that's kind of unfortunate So I had the idea while talking to Pranit, who's also working at Trivago, to build this thing where a service would hold you accountable on your promises. And say you were uh, planning to integrate some service into your side project by that time, by the date, mm -hmm. someone would call you and ask you if you did it. There would be no consequences, but just a matter of fact that someone was checking up on you would get you motivated. That was the proposal. I mean, it makes total sense. And uh, being a person that started a lot of side projects and quit also a lot of times and and uh, lost my motivation, I think it, it makes total sense. So you, you told us that you had the idea while speaking with a colleague. I would like to know, if it, how do you get your ideas? Is it like, is there a particular activity where you are mostly getting ideas or is random? They just come come to you. Yeah, so what doesn't work for me is to think real hard and then come up with an idea. Okay. Usually my ideas come up by, I don't know, not particularly thinking about anything. Uh, for example, taking a shower and then just letting my mind wander or having a really good conversation with a friend. And usually what happens is that once I have a good idea, other good ideas are just around the corner. It's like finding one mushroom, the other one is just a, around the next tree. And suddenly, if you start having ideas, your brain starts to reward you mm -hmm. for, for ideas. And then it, your brain starts to become this kind of idea machine. Yeah. What also helps a lot is to have people in your network that think alike. And this just takes time to build. But once you have a network, everyone around you has great ideas. And it's just a matter of picking the ones that maybe are fruitful to build. And it's funny because I, I've spoken with a lot of people and they tell me, they're like, yeah, I'm not creative. 
I, can, I cannot have any ideas. But I feel that is something that you can actually train, right? So the more, normally if you are attracted to be creative, you tend to think more about having ideas and then you naturally train your brain. But I, do you think that people that say that they are not creative, they can just train it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would even say that eventually you have the opposite problem where your brain just does not stop having ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which will keep you up at night or you, you tend to become a very, very boring conversation partner as well because you constantly want to think of ideas. Exactly. And if you are around people that don't have that mindset, then it can be quite annoying. So you have to like tone down a bit, you know? Yeah. And sometimes I have this exact same problem. Sometimes I feel that people won't take me seriously because I'm always keeping like giving another idea, bringing another idea. And I feel that this can actually be bad because people will be like, yeah, he cannot focus on, on a particular thing. Fortune rewards the people being prepared. And once you have this entrepreneurial mindset, everything becomes an opportunity. True. It's yeah. very hard to, to stop having that mindset then. Like whatever happens, you're like, oh, this is definitely broken. We can fix it. And you can make some profit out of it. You can maybe find some customers, whatever. So, okay. So this time you're having a great conversation with a friend and you realize that this could be a potential idea. So... What was your next steps? Did you like start building immediately or did you did like some market analysis? What, what were your next steps? The main problem that I have at this stage is that if I don't start building very, very quickly, I will lose motivation. And I can totally see that uh, fading away within the next two, three days or so. So uh, this evening after work, I sat down and decided to build a landing page. Mm -hmm. I'm not particularly a big fan of landing pages, but I think it helps me um, think from the user's perspective and also work on my value proposition. So I used a website builder from MailChimp, which recently was released, mm -hmm. and they allow you to do some drag and drop. And it's pretty simple, but it gets right. you to the point because there's... I mean, I saw it. It was... It was amazing. When you, you showed it to me, I was like, okay, this is basically a, an MVP. Yeah. It's uh, ready to So production. that entire so. thing took two hours to build, not because I'm that good, but because MailChimp really nailed it. Um, you have very little options. Uh, you maybe add one or two stock images and that's it. Uh, there's nothing else. Cool. By the way, MailChimp, if you want to sponsor us, you know, you have my number. Um, <laughs> it's also good to... To know the tools, I think that's something that we developers develop, <laughs> developers develop quite well. Is that even that we might not know everything, but we know we have Google and we know a lot of tools that kind of kickstart. You can kickstart new projects quite quickly, and it's great that you immediately tried out Mailchimp. Okay, great. So you you build it, you have the landing page now. What was your next step? So that is an advantage that I have, of course, and. It ties back to what I said earlier is that I have a network now and I could send it to maybe five or 10 people just yeah. to get immediate feedback. Uh, those are people I know are honest with me and um, they are also in the same um, area of expertise. So it's pretty easy to get some feedback from them. What I do is I just send out a couple of very low effort uh, emails and then see if anyone even replies. And I try to see what they are struggling with. So I sent it to this friend and he came back to me and said, wow, this was quick. Um, but the main thing is I didn't want to get this. Uh, I, I didn't want the spirit to get lost. So I did not particularly change the name or the colors. I wanted to, it to be very aggressive initially because I think kick my ass the name um, would indicate that uh, you're kind of in a, in a rod and you're not getting out by yourself so you need some help and what are you looking for what are you searching for those will be the terms that you want to have in the domain and and this is why i used the name mm -hmm. and also the color was red and uh, yellow so it was very ag aggressive and that it was, was on purpose of course because i wanted some initial emotion i knew that if i wanted to capture people's emotion then i would have to you know touch them on a very um on a very personal right. level. And, 
and and that's why I chose that color scheme. But the, the initial feedback was that it's really garbage and I should change it. <laughs> <laughs> I got that more than once, and so uh, I immediately changed it. And then after two, three iterations with friends, I had something that I could send around to potential customers. Right. So maybe maybe just real quick, um, because out of context, people might not understand. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that you can pick a mentor, but in order for you to pick a mentor, they have to be mentors in the first place. So I was always wondering who might be a good candidate for being a mentor right. and who, who would be a good mentor for me. And those would be the people I reach out and ask if they want to support me on that platform. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, what was their reaction? Like, was it easy to convince them? Because you had like a couple, when I saw it, you had like two or three already, right? Yeah, yeah. So actually, yes, surprisingly, yes, because a lot of people told me that they had this problem in the past mm -hmm. and they'd be willing to support other people that might be maybe just themselves, but a bit younger or more inexperienced. Right. And it sounded like it resonated a lot with uh, makers somehow. Right. And even some people that I approached and asked if they wanted to be mentors told me that they would rather be mentees. So getting mm. mentored, like getting mentors. Yeah. And, and I was not planning that in the beginning. Yeah. Now, of course, there were some problems down the road. <laughs> Okay, uh, and we'll get there, of course. Um, just one, one. I add something regarding what, with what you just said because I totally agree. So normally, when we build something, being a landing page, uh, some design, some mock-up, whatever, for us it's clear, right? So when it's you creating, you completely understand everything, and it's quite interesting. And I found that to be an excellent uh, way to improve our first landing page or MVP is to share with friends and not say a thing and see how they react, to see if they understand the product. And there's always small iterations, mm. small adjustments that are super useful so that then you can share to actual customers and they will understand. So I totally recommend everyone, by the way, to, to do this. So build something and then share it with close friends that will give you great feedback and then iterate over it. And that's also what you did, right? And then Besides the design tips, did you get any other feedback from, from your uh, network? Was it like positive, negative? It was mostly positive. Um, what I like to do is the girlfriend test. So <laughs> whenever I'm okay. too confident about an idea, then I uh, run it by my girlfriend and she doesn't have a filter. So she's very upfront. And yeah, literally she said, it sucks. I like <laughs> And I like that controversy, controversy. So but the design or the idea? What sucked? Mm, both. Uh, so <laughs> she knows that my design sucked, but uh, she was also not convinced about the idea. Actually, I pitched it to her without even showing her the page yet right. and asking her where she would get mentorship if she needed to. And yeah, it was kind of a supply and demand problem. So she doesn't have that problem. But even after telling her, she was not convinced because there were some open questions about how much would that service cost of course and yeah. how regular would you do that meeting but most importantly she said um do you really think this is the message you should be sending kick my ass <laughs> because you know nothing about the project the mentorship and that's exactly the point that was my yeah mission to even not go into details and not ask people about personal uh Question, uh, but personal issues that they might be facing right. that keeps them from, yeah, you know, finishing their project. Mm -hmm. So, but she said that probably it wouldn't help too much if a human asked you every month if you were done with this part or done with that section, and that will be the end of the call. So, for her, it would be more valuable to have someone that could understand another person at a deeper level. And that gave me some food for thought, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was actually also a little bit my feedback, right? So that it, it would make more sense or it would be more helpful if someone would actually understand some about my area and it could help me there. And um, yeah. okay, so you got feedback. The feedback wasn't great. What were your next steps? Um, I guess... One thing that I like to do, which I should be working on, is 
um, to to ask for external confirmation at this point. So if I'm getting a little unsure, then maybe I have another chat with someone that might be a potential mentor and I talk this through. But I guess what I should be doing instead is really thinking about the value proposition a little more and seeing if there's a way to pivot and make up my mind um, about the feedback first. Mm -hmm. So that's what I should have been doing. Um, anyway, in this case, I reached out to a couple of people and talked it through, but pretty early I, and also some other people came to the conclusion that, yes, probably this is really what we should be doing. And also a lot of people understood that this would be the role of a mentor to ask personal questions. Um, right. But after talking through this, we found that there's also another problem, which is mentoring helps if uh, both sides have some kind of contract. Uh, you get this thing from me and I expect this reward from you. Um, but the moment you try to connect with someone on a deeper level, mm -hmm. um, those online meetings can be flawed because it requires a lot of effort for some mentor to get into your perspective and think right. what you need at this point. And then maybe this online service is not personal enough. So maybe you actually want someone in your network to ask. Um, so it gets very impersonal if you, if you like. Right. I mean, but that's, for instance, what coaches and therapy, that's kind of similar, right? Like, so it's sometimes it's even better to have someone that you don't know to, to talk with, because I don't know, maybe you can be more open, something like this. Yeah. The, the main question is, how do you scale social interactions mm. and how much is it worth? So I think uh, mentoring is the hard problem to both generalize and right. scale. Uh, it's, it's hard to build a platform. Um, it's a hard to build a platform out of it without trading time for money. Yeah. And the margins are pretty low. So that means if I'm mentoring you for half an hour, And I want to do that on a personal mm -hmm. level so that it actually provides value. That means I have to do half an hour of, course, of preparation yeah. just to know how I can help you. But who's paying of for course. this, you know? And in the end, uh, you're looking at rates that you wouldn't want to pay as, say, a junior developer or as a junior de designer or someone who's studying mm -hmm. right now. Um, maybe it's just too much. So it just yeah. doesn't scale. So. So your idea initially was to basically just have a, a kind of a script of questions that people could ask, like a literally kick my ass. So what did you do last week? Why did you manage? What do you want to do next week? So on. And you kind of realized that there was a need for something a little bit more personalized. And as I understand, you wanted to automate this. So you wanted to create some kind of chatbot or some tool that could automate this mentorship mm -hmm. process right yeah and then you realize that it's this is actually quite hard to do it's a very hard problem to solve yeah it's hard because it fails the turing test and i right. asked myself the question would i want to use that and the answer is no because mm -hmm. um if there's no human on the other side um uh, i can totally disappoint a bot I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, True. I actually di disappoint like a, a hundred notifications every single day. Uh, yeah, and yeah. my uh, don't ask my email uh, inbox. But, you know, that's kind of the point that I wanted to fix, that there's someone on the other side that cared about you. Now, yeah. of course, another way to automate that or, say, scale that would be to just provide the platform and let other mentors do all the work. So you don't... Uh, True. trade okay. time for money. But the thing is, mm -hmm. you run into all those moral issues because you don't want to do it, but someone else should do it for you. And you just take a commission that totally sounded wrong to me. There are a couple okay. platforms out there that do exactly this, but mm -hmm. I heard some really bad feedback by mm -hmm. really good mentors that felt ripped off and I didn't want to go there. So that's actually a good topic here so you also shared with me a couple of of these platforms so did you just do your market research after building the landing page isn't this something that you should do before yeah so 
initially I did some very, very quick uh, searches. I didn't find much. Uh, also, I think that there's a very, very fine line. So there's a sweet spot that you have to kind of hit. Because if you do too much research, you never start with anything. And sure. um, if you do enough research, then you will find something that is at least closely resembling to what you want to do. Yeah. And then you might get motiv demotivated. But what I like to do is, at least with the landing page, I just like to let my mind flow and I let it free and I see what it comes up with. Mm -hmm. And then later I compare it with competitors and see if this is really the spirit that I also want to capture mm -hmm. or if it's really something else. So there's a couple of platforms, um, for example, Mentor Cruise mm -hmm. um, or 20.so, and they are fine in their own right, mm -hmm. but it wasn't my goal initially. So mm, I guess the main goal was to build something very unpersonal, uh, right. someone that would not know much about your project, someone is like an anti-mentor, mm -hmm. uh, someone that is just someone that holds you accountable for. Right. And Mentor Crews and all the others are doing proper mentoring. But I wouldn't have the time for it, right? So Right. So what is the conclusion then? Are you working on it? Are you continuing it? Or what is mm, I guess the conclusion is uh, that it actually worked. Um, it sounds surprising, but I yeah. <laughs> did, did my due diligence. I created the landing page. Mm -hmm. I get, got some feedback. I know more than I did before. And I was bold enough to kill it True. because uh, I celebrate that um, I'm saving myself some time here exactly. um, by not maybe going down into down this rabbit hole because I have plenty of other things I want to try next. And there's yeah. always an opportunity cost. Um, you know, I, I might try this in the future again, but on a very no code, low effort kind of basis. Right. So one thing I'm thinking about is to ask people actively on Twitter whether they need a mentor and then just maybe picking a handful of people mm -hmm. and just rolling with it and seeing how it goes. Right. Um, that would allow me to find a really decent uh, price point that everyone is happy with. Um, finding maybe a select few mentors for myself mm -hmm. or mentees for myself, uh, people that are generally interested in getting mentored by me. And um, maybe down uh, down the line, I, I find projects that I want to support on a bigger level. And mm -hmm. this is where profit might be. Right. So something like a vent venture capitalism uh, for open source would also be something interesting. That's cool. That's super cool, yeah. And then, so how long did this cycle last? From the idea to killing the idea, how many days or weeks were there? Mm, I would say like seven to ten days, something like that. Days, ten days. So that's what I find it amazing, that there was a full cycle of having an idea, trying it out, collecting feedback, kind of deciding that this idea, or at least the, the first thoughts of the idea were not maybe the best, making your mind what would be the, your next steps in case you want to continue and pursue it, and also then killing the idea, everything in 10 days. So that's yeah. something that it's amazing. And a lot of people that I speak with, they, they normally always try to build huge products and huge features, and that's what you just did. That's exactly what I think people, everyone should do. You should try to do things very simple because you can learn a lot from this from simple ideas, from simple MVPs. You can already learn a lot. And you can also learn if you want to pursue it, right? Exactly. So one thing I can recommend to people is to kill their darlings. Uh, don't stick to any one idea for too long. If it fades out and you're not really motivated to do it anymore, it's okay to kill it. And there's a sunken cost fallacy. So that means uh, if you spend X amount of time on one project, then the likelihood of killing it um, is is bigger than if you spent Y amount of time on the project where Y is bigger than X. That's a very mathematical way <laughs> <Yes>. of saying. <laughs> so the more the more you work on it, the harder it is to kill it. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I, <laughs> thanks. That's why I like to build as many small things as I can. So I yeah. like to um, take a number of small bets and then see which one works right. and. 
it's similar to similarly to how uh, VC money works. So mm-hmm. you sponsor maybe 10 startup ideas and one will work, nine will fade sure. and yeah. that's fine. So because one pays for the rest right. and, and you can do that for yourself. Totally. Right. Uh, Matisse, we are already unfortunately running out of time. I just have one last question for you, which is you have so many ideas. And as you just said, you are always trying out multiple approaches. Is there a specific field or a specific area that you know, okay, if there's an idea in this area, I will definitely love it and I'll pursue it? Mm, I'm very optimistic about no-code solutions these days. So uh, Notion SO and Super.so are really cool platforms to try out new ideas. And I love that some no coders so no developers are also building their uh, side projects and startups these days so i think that there's a uh, room for tooling for those people mm-hmm. and it, this is also one field that i'm working on right now to look into how to get more people into building side projects okay. or um, building things that they love yeah so uh one thing that they can try anyone that is listening is just cool. look through your desktop or, or your files and mm-hmm. see if you have a list of anything, really. Any list that you created yourself can be an Excel file, can be a Word document or so. And see if you've made a collection because you wanted some information. Those are really good things for initial side projects. I actually wrote a blog post about it. Um, you can find it on my website, endler.dev. And there I describe how your first mm-hmm. side project should be an Excel sheet. I will add your website to the description of this episode. So if you're listening and you want to know more, just go. And also maybe your Twitter because you are very active. So what's your uh, Twitter handle? It's very simple. It's just Matthias Entler in one word. Okay. Uh, I will also add it. Okay. <laughs> add it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for this conversation. It was super nice. I think that there's a lot of things that we can still speak about. So probably you will listen to Matthias in other episodes. But yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, and um, I would be glad to be back. All right, this was another episode of Wannabe Entrepreneur. See you tomorrow.